Exile of the Afghans Iran under the rule of Nadir Shah The center where anti-Afghan forces accumulated was the northern Caspian province of Mazandaran. The son of the Safavid Shah Sultan Hossein, Tarmasp, settled here. Anti-Afghan Iranian Khans, with their retinues gradually began to flock here to him. Tarmasp, in particular, was supported by one of the most influential Khans of northeastern Iran, Fathali Khan Kaja, the grandfather of the future founder of the Kaja dynasty, which established its power in Iran at the end of the 18th century. In 1726, Nadir Khan Offshore joined Tarmasp with his numerous retinue. Nadir was born in 1688 in Khorasan. He came from the Kirklu clan of the offshore Turkic tribe, part of which was resettled by the Safavids from Azerbaijan to Khorasan to fight the Uzbeks. Different sources call Nadir's father either a shepherd, or a camel driver, or a tanner, or a peasant. In his youth, Nadir either robbed or served in the feudal squads of the Khans, in particular, he also served with Malik Mahmud of Seistan, and enjoyed the fame of a skilled military leader. Tarmasp, after Nadir and his retinue joined him, undertook a campaign against Malik Mahmud in order to subdue Khorasan. Even then, Nadir was clearing his way to power. During the siege of Mashhad, at the end of 1726, Nadir managed to eliminate Fathali Khan Kaja, whom he considered the most dangerous rival on the way to power. He convinced Tarmasp that Fathali Khan was plotting against him, and Fathali Khan was killed on Tarmasp's orders. After that, Nadir, who took the name of Tarmasp Kuli Khan, which means Khan is the slave of Tarmasp, began to play a major role in the Tarmaop camp. In December 1726, Malik Mahmud surrendered Mashhad to the troops of Tarmasp. Over the next two years, Nadir subjugated the whole of Khorasan. In the spring of 1729, he began subordinating the Afghans to the Abdalis. By the middle of this year, the Abdalis who inhabited the region of Herat were subdued. Nadir's success alarmed Ashraf, who in August 1729 marched north against Nadir with all the troops he had. On September 29, in the Battle of Damgan, the Afghan troops were defeated by Nadir and fled to Isfahan. Nadir's success in the fight against the Afghans caused an influx of volunteers in his units and also intensified the struggle of the Iranian population against the Afghans in those areas where their power was still preserved. Nadir, who was pursuing the Afghans, was given all kinds of assistance by the local population along the way. Before Yefagan, near the village of Merchikert, Nadir inflicted another defeat on the Afghans of Ashraf, who after that, leaving Isfahan in November, fled, pursued by the local population. To Shiraz. Nadir, and after him Tarmasp entered Isfahan, where Tarmasp was elevated to the Shah's throne. In December, Nadir went to Fars to finish off the Afghans. After the defeat of the Afghan detachments near Shiraz, Ashraf fled first to La, and then to Balochistan, where in early 1730 he was killed by one of the Khans of the Baloch Brahui tribe. Thus, by 1730 the Afghans were finally expelled from Iran. The Afghan invasion was a severe disaster for Iran and its population. It led to the devastation of a number of southern regions, the destruction of irrigation systems, the decline of agriculture and handicrafts. The almost complete cessation of foreign and a significant reduction in domestic trade. It is believed that as a result of the Afghan invasion, Iran lost about one million people. The Isfahan region was particularly hard hit. The population of the city of Isfahan has decreased several times. A huge part of the city was destroyed and subsequently was never inhabited. It is believed that about a thousand villages were destroyed during the Afghan invasion in the Isfahan region. Great destruction was also inflicted on Shiraz and other cities. With their barbaric violence and robberies during the seven years of domination in Iran, the Afghans aroused the general hatred of the population which was ready to support anyone who could lead the fight against foreign invaders. This explains the speed and ease with which Nadir managed to defeat the Afghans and expel them from Iran. Although Nadir pursued his personal ambitious goals in the fight against the Afghans, the liberation of Iran from the yoke of foreign robbers was associated with his name. In the eyes of the people, 
he was the liberator of Iran from the Afghan invaders. And this reputation, as a liberator, from a foreign yoke later greatly helped Nadir, in seizing the Shah's throne. Already in 1730, Nadir became the de facto ruler of Iran, and Tarmasp, whose slave Nadir called himself, was a puppet in his hands. After some time, Nadir, taking advantage of the circumstances, tried to completely get rid of Tarmasp. Having done away with the Afghans, Nadir spoke out in the first half of 1730 against the Turks, who by that time had occupied Georgia, Armenia, Azerbaijan. Part of Dagestan and Shervan, the other part of these two regions was occupied by the Russians, the entire Iranian Kurdistan, Hamadon. Kermanshah and a significant part of central Iran, Persian Iraq. Nadir managed to inflict several defeats on the Turks. His troops occupied Hamadon and Kermanshah. After that, Nadir entered Azerbaijan and in August 1730 captured Tabriz and other cities of Azerbaijan. During this campaign, the commander of the Russian troops, General Levashov, assisted Nadir against the Turks. In particular, during the siege of Ardabil, Levashov sent several of his officers, as well as guns, to help him. Nadir's successes were greatly facilitated by the fact that in September 1730 an uprising of patron Khalil broke out in Istanbul, as a result of which the Grand Vizier of Turkey was killed. And Sultan Ahmed III was overthrown from the throne. The Turkish ruling circles, busy with internal affairs, could not devote much attention and strength to the fight against Nadir. Having occupied Tabriz, Nadir was about to move on, but at that time news came from Khorasan about an uprising in Herat of the Abdali Afghans, who threatened Mashhad. Nadir immediately hurried to Khorasan. While Nadir was busy subordinating the Afghans, during 1731 and early 1732, Tarmasp in 1731 began military operations against the Turks with the intention of capturing Yerevan and Nakhichevan. But suffered a severe defeat, almost being captured. The Turks again occupied Hamadon, Kermanshah, Tabriz, and other cities. In the south, they invaded Khuzistan. On January 10, 1732, peace was concluded between Tarmasp and the Turks, according to which Tarmasp ceded to Turkey all the territories north of the Arak River. When Nadir found out about this, he issued an appeal against Tarmasp and the treaty he had concluded and sent a letter to the Turkish Sultan demanding the return of all the occupied territories. Threatening war otherwise. In August 1732, Nadir with his detachments came to Isfahan and declared Shah Tarmasp deposed. The eight-month-old son of Tarmasp Abbas was proclaimed Shah under Regan Nadir. At the end of 1732, Nadir moved against the Turks. Having occupied Hamadon and Kermanshah, Iranian troops laid siege to Baghdad. In December 1733, between Nadir and the commander of the Turkish troops in Baghdad, Ahmed Pasha, an agreement was signed on the cessation of hostilities. This treaty provided for the return by Turkey to Iran of all Iranian territories captured by Turkey over the past ten years. And the establishment of the Turkish-Iranian border in the form in which it was determined by the Turkish-Iranian Treaty of 1639. But the Turkish government refused to approve this treaty, and in mid-1734 hostilities resumed. During them, Nadir occupied Ganja, Tbilisi and other cities north of the Arak River, and invaded Turkish territory, besieging the fortress of Kars. In this campaign, in particular during the capture of Ganja, Nadir again used the help of Russian engineers and artillery. During the Turkish-Iranian War, Russia voluntarily renounced in favor of Iran those areas that were ceded to it by Tarmasp under the Treaty of 1723. After the death of Peter I, the Russian government began to attach less importance to Iranian affairs. Russia, which was at war with Turkey at that time, was interested in an alliance with Iran. Therefore, as early as February 1, 1732, a Russian-Iranian treaty was signed in Rasht, according to which Russia abandoned Jalan, Mazandaran and Ustrabad, ceded to it by Tarmasp in favor of Iran. And in March 1735, under the Ganja Treaty, Russia agreed to transfer Baku to Iran and Derbent with adjacent areas. This treaty obliged Iran never to transfer these areas to any other power, 
to be an eternal ally of Russia, and not to conclude a separate peace with Turkey. But the terms of the Ganja Treaty with Russia were not fulfilled by Nadir. Already from the end of 1735, separate peace negotiations began between Nadir and the Turks, which ended on September 28, 1736, with the signing of an agreement in Constantinople. According to which the Turks agreed to recognize the terms of the Peace of Baghdad in 1733. However, the agreement of 1736 was also not ratified by Turkey. Nadir used his successes in the fight against Turkey and the return of all lost territories to Iran, with the exception of Kandahar, to proclaim himself Shah of Iran. In January 1736, by order of Nadir, a council of the feudal nobility, Kurultai, was assembled on Mugen, to which about 20,000 people arrived. Nadir feignedly told the audience that he was tired and wanted to retire, and suggested that they elect a new Shah in view of the fact that the child Abbas was not able to govern the state. The meeting was properly prepared. Molabashi, chief Maul, who dared to speak out in favor of the Safavid dynasty, was killed on the orders of Nadir. Kurultai was surrounded by troops loyal to Nadir. After that, all those present voted for the election of Nadir Shah. The latter declared that he could accept the Shah's throne and crown only on the condition that everyone was faithful to him and his son, refused to support the Safavids. From Shi'ism and enmity with the Sunnis, formed along with the existing four Sunni theological sects, Hanafites, Shafi'ites, Maliki and Hanbalids, the fifth Sunni sect. The religious head of which would be considered Imam Jaffa Sadiq. Seeing the terrible example of the execution of Mullah Bashi, the participants of the Kurultai unquestioningly agreed to all the conditions, and on March 8, 1736, the coronation ceremony of Nadir as Shah of Iran took place. Nadir's attempt to replace Shi'ism with a new Sunni theological sense, from which nothing later came of it, was explained not by religious, but by political considerations. With this event, Nadir thought to achieve a religious community between the Sunnis and Shiites who inhabited Iran, and put an end to the enmity between them. As well as facilitate the conclusion of an agreement with Turkey. In subsequent negotiations with Turkey, Nadir tried to include in the agreement with her a clause on the official recognition by the Turks of the new theological sense he had proclaimed. But the Turks refused to do so. Apparently, already then Nadir was thinking about creating a single Muslim state throughout the territory of Western Asia, and by declaring a new religious persuasion. He wanted to prepare the ideological ground for his future conquests. In addition, by this event, Nadir wanted to weaken the Shiite clergy, who enjoyed great influence under the last Safavids, and deal a final blow to the Safavid dynasty, which relied on Shiism and introduced it in Iran as the state religion. Nadir's struggle with the Shiite clergy subsequently was not limited to the area of religion. Nadir confiscated the land and other possessions of the clergy, which they seized into their hands under the Safavids. In November 1736, having previously suppressed the uprising of the Bakhtiyars in the Isfahan region, Nadir led an 80,000-strong army to the east with the aim of capturing Kandahar. In March 1738, after a long siege, Kandahar was taken. Nadir gave Kandahar to be plundered by his troops, and the city was destroyed to the ground. In the same 1738, Nadir occupied Ghazni, Kabul, Bork and other cities of Afghanistan, and then moved to Delhi through Peshawar and Lahore. Appointing his son Rizat Suli Khan as the ruler of Iran as viceroy. The reasons that prompted Nadir to undertake a campaign against India were as follows. The Afghan invasion and Nadir's incessant wars exhausted Iran, which was on the verge of financial bankruptcy. Famine raged in many regions of Iran. <laughs>